The Mauritian government, or more specifically, their Information and Communications Technologies Authority, uh, which basically seems to be their equivalent of the FCC, is taking a page out of China's playbook by trying to implement state-sponsored internet censorship. Except they've already been doing that since 2009, but the difference this time is that social media is more popular than it has ever been. And so the government has decided that you can't just use typical run-of-the-mill HTTPS or any other type of web-based encryption uh, to hide your traffic because then that prevents the government and ISPs from being able to see exactly what you're looking at or exactly what you're posting on social media. Uh, so they plan to start monitoring and censoring that social media traffic as they see fit. So the way that they plan to do this is by basically implementing a man-in-the-middle attack on the entire country. So all of the outgoing and incoming internet traffic to the island is going to be decrypted and then inspected for any naughtiness. Uh, or more likely, what they're going to do is they're just going to decrypt it and then re-encrypt it uh, with keys that the government has uh, so that they can just you know, decrypt it whenever they need to. And they're just going to archive all of that information so that then if you start doing something that the government doesn't like, they could just pull up your file and they could see, oh yes, I see you posted an illegal meme to Twitter back in May of 2021. Um, and the sentence for that is 10 years in jail. So off you go to prison. Um, now, I did a little bit of research into this country because honestly, I didn't really know a whole lot about them until I uh, saw this article that they were censoring their internet. Um, and I found out that they do have a constitution. And in the 12th section, uh, of their constitution covers freedom of expression. So you would think that censoring social media, i.e. the most common way for people to express themselves freely in the digital age would be unconstitutional. Except there is, of course, limitations on your free expression. So um, in the Mauritian island, your freedom of expression is limited if it goes against the interest of defense, public safety, public order, public morality, or public health. And you know what this really reminds me of? It reminds me of YouTube's rules for their platform. So, you know, YouTube is supposedly a free speech, free expression uh, platform, right? I mean, after all, the CEO did just win a free expression award. Uh, but YouTube, it has certain rules against what you can and can't post. And one of the rules um, basically their hat trick for taking down any content that they don't like is the rule against posting harmful or dangerous content. Now you would think that the only content that would be, de be deemed harmful or dangerous would be something like, I don't know, teaching you how to enrich uranium at home. Or if there was like a kid show, right? Some sort of a puppet show that was telling kids to go drink the chemicals under the sink because it's going to give them superpowers. You would think, only things like that would be deemed harmful or dangerous. But as far as my channel is concerned, my lowly little channel, uh, teaching people how to use YouTube DL and providing links to leaked Windows source code is considered harmful or dangerous. Um, but you, if you really wanna know what's harmful or dangerous in this situation, it is the way that this statewide man in the middle attack is going to be implemented. So. The fiber optic backbones that connect to the undersea internet cables uh, spanning the globe, they are nationalized on the Mauritian island. So basically their government owns their internet. It's not like here in the US where our internet is owned by corporations and they then have to go and bribe the government. That step is removed on the Mauritian island. So they're very, very efficient. Um, now in order for authorities um, to snoop on all of the traffic, uh, and have it all go to its destination so that it basically looks like it's working normally from an end user's perspective, the government is going to be using NetSweeper, uh, which is a network filtering and monitoring tool that's commonly used in schools and corporations. Now, typically, part of setting up NetSweeper is to have everyone install custom certificates on the computer 
that are going to allow this monitoring to happen without the built-in defenses of the computer, like the antivirus, um, you know, all of like Windows' built-in things, and even the browser itself, um, these defenses that would alert you and try to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks because typically you don't want your traffic to be monitored or messed around with by a third party. Um, now, in this case, the traffic is going to be routed to a proxy server in the Netherlands where um, I think the data is going to be harvested and archived. Because like I said, I doubt they're going to decrypt it and check it for naughtiness in real time. It's just pretty difficult to do that. Um, now, all of this is going to be especially difficult to implement for two reasons. And these are just two reasons that I can think of, um, again, not even really knowing a whole lot about the situation, but uh, I don't know this for sure but I re highly suspect that a lot of the people that have PCs on, and smartphones on the Mauritian island didn't actually purchase them there because this is a really small country um, and not just in land size, but also in population and GDP, the average person on the Mauritian islands don't really make a lot of money. Um, you know, the average earning there is something like 46K Mauritian rupees, which converted to US dollars is only about 1150. Uh, so yeah, $1,150 for an entire year of work. I mean, that's not even enough to buy like most gaming PCs or most high-end PCs in general. Um, they do have a couple of malls there, but from the pictures that I saw, they look a lot more like supermarkets, like almost like a Walmart here. Uh, I didn't really see any computer or cell phone shops inside of them. Like, again, it was mostly food and clothes. Uh, it's also an island, so if someone orders a computer from another country, they probably have to pay all sorts of import taxes. I'm sure that it's very similar to Australia where there's all crazy markups on electronics you buy. Um, so what I would guess the situation is there, the more affluent uh, Mauritians, the people that can actually afford computers, probably just travel to other countries and buy them, most likely America, because um, we tend to have lower retail prices and lower taxes on those goods than other countries. So they probably just buy them here while they're on vacation. Um, and then bring them back to their home country. So how are you going to enforce the installation of that certificate on that device? Are you just going to have the customs officers uh, there in the airports or there on the docks or whatever, learn tech support, and then once you declare your items, they go ahead and install the certificate on your computer for you? I wouldn't even trust the TSA to do that on my devices, you know, let alone these guys. Uh, it's easy to monitor traffic in a school or in a corporation because they're usually the ones that are giving those computers to you. So they have all the certificates and all the settings pre-installed on them before you get them. Uh, or even if it's a BYOD situation, the admins of that organization will guide you through the setup for this type of stuff. They'll usually do, or they might just do all of it for you uh, before that device is ever allowed on their network. So is the government going to start handing out pre-bugged computers and pre-bugged cell phones to their citizens? Is that what they're gonna start doing? Uh, the other big problem that I see is that, and it kind of makes me wonder why they're even bothering with doing all this in the first place, is that less than 2% of the Mauritian population uses the internet to begin with. So I wouldn't imagine that Mauritians are a very tech savvy people in general, uh, especially the older generations across the board, they tend to not be as tech savvy. So how are the people that actually want to comply with these regulations going to do so if they don't have the technical knowledge to do it? Uh, it pretty much seems to me like the people that that are actually able to get computers, like the more affluent Mauritians are just not going to comply with this law because it's gonna be really hard to enforce. And the people who maybe would want to comply with this law either don't have computers or cell phones to comply with in the first place, um, or if they did, they probably don't know how to actually do it due to limited technical skills. Uh, now there is a petition on change.org uh, I don't know how much the Mauritian government really cares about change.org petitions, uh, but it's already got over 22,000 signatures. Um, it's very close to their goal of 25,000 signatures. So maybe throw your support on there uh, if you want. <laughs> I guess that's the best thing uh, that we can do to try and stop this nonsense, uh, other than performing a coup. But 
Right now, I'm too busy to head over to an East African island and lead an armed insurrection against their government. Uh, and if any members of the Mauritian parliament happen to be watching this video, just let your people have this their internet. Uh, you know, only about 2% of your population seems to be using the internet in the first place from the little bit of research that I did. And besides, the only reason to really fear your citizens talking to one another and freely expressing themselves is if you think it's going to lead to more of them becoming aware of your government's corruption and then getting pissed about it and then dragging you out of office for righteous punishment.